Great. Welcome back. Let's continue with other news now. There have been different responses from Zimbabwe's political leaders in the aftermath of the United States announcement on Monday to lift sanctions against several Zimbabwean individuals and companies. The United States imposed new sanctions on President Emerson Nangagwa and some top officials. These sanctions were originally imposed back in 2001, allegedly um, election rigging and also human rights violations. The latest sanctions were imposed due to their alleged involvement in a campaign of human rights abuse and corruption in their country, according to the U.S. government. Well, let's take this discussion further. For more, we're going to be joined by teams by Alan Ngari, Africa Advocacy Director at Human Rights Watch. Alan, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on the SABC at the Sawa. Thanks, Liz. All good afternoon to you. Alan, let's get your reaction as Human Rights Watch to the United States terminating Zimbabwe's sanction program, imposing sanction or reimposing sanctions on nine people, three entities, including the country's president, his wife, senior government officials for the alleged involvement in corruption and human rights abuses. Sure. Um, Human Rights Watch supports the use of targeted sanctions um, and essentially this emphasizes on the need for individual accountability by focusing on and singling out those that are considered to be most responsible for human rights violations, um, while also minimizing the negative impacts that um, sanctions might have on a country's population. So this specific sanction is, as you mentioned, um, for 11 um, in individuals and three entities. And we support these targeted sanctions against these persons because uh, what's been happening in Zimbabwe over a period of time has been uh, serious violations of human rights, including the denial of the right to life the right to security and various other rights for the Zimbabwean people. Alan, thank you for those opening remarks. On the back of that, perhaps you could talk to us about what these sanctions now mean for human rights advocacy, even the pursuit for justice in Zimbabwe. I mean, questions about whether this could open the leaders up for litigation now that the human rights violations and corruption are, are also there. Talk, talk us through that a little bit more. A very important question and uh, considerations there, Liesl. Well, what we know is that Zimbabwe has for a long um, period of time, a long history of serious human rights violations. And these include a broad range from abductions to enforced disappearances, killings, arbitrary detention. Human Rights Watch and various other organizations have been documenting these over the years. And these have been going on um, as far back as the 1980s. And what's really um, uh, sad about it is that there's been a lack of accountability, um, even for past and historical unresolved issues. Um, so for example, most recently, following the August 2023 general elections, We've seen a number of uh, clamping down on civil society activists, human rights defenders, um, and, and, and main opposition members. And what we would advocate is that any action to effect change via the use of these sanctions should be aimed at the policymakers, which is exactly what these targeted sanctions have done, Lizon. And so on the back of that, do you think that this move by the US will ultimately lead to the government of Zimbabwe undertaking key reforms to improve its record on human rights, good governance, anti-corruption, as per its statement. What are you anticipating on that front? We've expressed serious concern about um, the failure of the government of Zimbabwe to um, effect um, institutional legal policy reforms over the number of years. Um, and these reforms would be really necessary for the citizens to freely express themselves, um, no matter what their political views are, um, to allow them to vote freely. And then over the years, as we've pointed this out at many areas uh, for reform in Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe, for example, within the security sector, um, which, you know, again, going back to last year's elections, abusive laws, um, security forces involved in, in those processes, um, this, this, this this really is a serious situation that needs the necessary reform. So the sanctioning of these individuals and entities really should be used for purposes of encouraging measures aimed at um, reform, measures aimed at ensuring that these grave human rights violations are um, investigated and those responsible brought to justice to ensure that victims have access to justice and effective remedies. And so there are obviously short-term, medium-term and long-term uh, effects 
from the uh, based on these decisions. Perhaps just as we conclude, you could speak to um, how these sanctions imposed by not only the US but other nations as well impact on the humanitarian responses in Zimbabwe. And if we're going to look at the long term, what are the changes that you'd like to see in the country? Mm. Thanks, Lisa. Well, as a general matter, sanctions and other measures taken against individuals and abusive individuals for that matter and governments, they're most effective and legitimate when they are imposed in a multilateral fashion that is by a group of states. So here we've just in the US, it's unilateral, but um, this could be followed by others. Um, what we are um, keen is to see that these uh, are really targeted, as I mentioned before, and not overly broad, um, such that then the general population would be affected. Um, and, you know, what what that would do is it would impose negative effects on humanitarian needs and enjoyment of rights of, of the Zimbabwean people as a whole. But what we would like to see is an end to the violations of human rights and to see concrete and effective measures uh, taken to respect, promote and fulfill human rights obligations in the country in keeping with Zimbabwe's constitution and international human rights treaties that Zimbabwe is a party to.